Welcome back to Madman Review. Have you ever heard of an anti-2A remark so stupid that it made you double check if your ears were working right? Ha! <laughs> uh, yeah, there's a ton of those and they're always fun to talk about. In this video, we'll talk about some of the dumbest gun control quotes from politicians and celebrities. From quotes that sound like they were conjured up by a five-year-old to those that'll have you double face palming so hard you'll leave a mark. This video is guaranteed to make you shake your head a couple times. These quotes are proof that when it comes to guns, common sense goes out the window. Firearms just have this effect of stupefying some people. Without further ado, let's get to them. Number 1. California Representative Mike Thompson Federal law prohibits me from having more than three shells in my shotgun when I'm duck hunting, so federal law provides more protection for the ducks than it does for citizens. California Representative Mike Thompson quoted this during a press event in 2013 when Democrats unveiled new gun control legislation. He said, to emphasize the discrepancy in federal law that seems to offer more protection for ducks than humans, making it sound like we need even stricter gun control laws to save human lives. Our Democrat friend here seems fascinated about ducks. He talks about gun laws as if the Constitution had a secret amendment about the right to bear arms against uh, ducks. The point is a bit like comparing apples to armored tanks. Sure, we've got rules to protect ducks, but that's about ensuring sustainable hunting, not duck civil rights. When we talk about the Second Amendment, it's a whole different ballgame. Now, imagine for a second if it were legal to hunt humans. Sounds like the plot of a Netflix flop too ridiculous to stream, right? Hunting regulations are about keeping duck populations from going the way of the dodo. But humans? Last I checked, humans are not in season. They never were, and they never will be. At least not in Islamic countries where it's okay for Mohammedans to hunt so-called infidels. So, while the analogy might fly for a laugh if you're an anti-gun libturd, it doesn't quite land in this serious debate about gun rights and personal protection. And remember, no ducks were harmed in the making of this argument. Can't say the same for logic, though. Number 2. LeBron James It just goes back to what I said before about guns in America. I think it's such a longer conversation, but we keep dealing with the same story. The same conversation every single time it happens. It just continues to happen. The ability to get a gun, the ability to do these things over and over and over, and there's been no change, is literally ridiculous. Makes no sense that we continue to lose innocent lives on campuses, schools, at shopping markets and movie theaters, and all types of stuff. It's ridiculous. LeBron James made this statement during a press conference in Las Vegas in December of last year when he had arrived for the NBA's in-season tournament semifinals. His remarks were in response to a tragic event at UNLV where three people were killed by a gunman identified as Anthony Polito. James expressed his frustration over the recurring issue of gun violence and the ease of obtaining firearms, emphasizing the importance of addressing this problem to prevent the loss of innocent lives. We all know it's not just about guns, it's also about people, responsibility, and rights. These anti-gunners focus too much on virtue signaling, spewing nonsense about guns, and not enough on the hands that hold them. It's like blaming the stove and pot for bad cooking. America's no stranger to gun laws. Mr. NBA GOAT, we've got gun laws by the dozens. Number 3. Bill Clinton My own view is that you can go to the extreme in either direction. And when we got organized as a country and we wrote a fairly radical constitution with a radical Bill of Rights, giving a radical amount of individual freedom to Americans. It was assumed that the Americans who had that freedom would use it responsibly. That is, when we set up this country, abuse of people by government was a big problem. 
So if you read the Constitution, it's rooted in the desire to limit the ability of government's ability to mess with you. Because that was a huge problem. It can still be a huge problem. But it assumed that people would basically be raised in coherent families, in coherent communities. And they would work for the common good, as well as for the individual welfare. What's happened in America today is too many people live in areas where there's no family structure, no community structure, and no work structure. And so there's a lot of irresponsibility. And so a lot of people say there's too much personal freedom. When personal freedom is being abused, you have to move to limit it. This statement was made by former President Bill Clinton in an interview on MTV's Enough is Enough forum. The whole thing was supposedly focused on discussing violence in America and took place during Clinton's presidency. Now, this statement was not explicitly against the Second Amendment, but attacking the Constitution is tantamount to attacking the Bill of Rights, given their collective significance to American legal and civil liberties framework. So, where do we even start with this one, okay? Uh, Well, first off, let's get one thing straight. The Constitution didn't give us freedom like it was handing out candy on Halloween. No. Uh, It's basically the rule book for the government, not a free-for-all pass for the rest of us. The government can't just willy-nilly decide to put the brakes on our rights. The ones spelled out in the Bill of Rights, and not just there, by the way, are off-limits unless they decide to go through the whole hoopla of adding an amendment that specifically says, (laughs) Just kidding, we're taking those back. Number 4. J. Moore What bothers me most about today is that we're getting used to it. Enough. Second Amendment must go. Violence has to stop. Culture must change. The Second Amendment lends itself to the culture of violence we're living in. Stop blowing up my timeline with your gun porn fetishes. Jay Moore, a well-known actor and comedian famous for his role in Jerry Maguire, became a center of controversy for his statements on social media following the Boston Marathon bombings in April 2013. In the wake of the tragic event, which resulted in three deaths and over 170 injuries, Moore took to Twitter to express his frustration with the culture of violence in the United States. He argued for the repeal of the Second Amendment, suggesting that it contributes to a culture that normalizes violence. Even with the resulting backlash and criticism, he clarified that his intention was not to politicize the tragedy, but to call for a critical evaluation of the country's relationship with guns and violence. This comedian's take on our 2A rights really ruffles my feathers. I mean, for crying out loud, the Boston terror attacks weren't even done with firearms. They were done with explosives encased in pressure cookers. Okay, like, dude, what's the Second Amendment have to do with it? And to say we're all getting cozy with violence and it's the Second Amendment's fault? Well, ain't that rich, Mr. Hollywood actor. Sure, violence is a huge problem, but stripping away our rights isn't the recipe for peace. It's like trying to fix a leaky faucet by turning off the water to the whole house and calling out gun owners for having gun-slash-porn fetishes. (laughs) That's a low blow, bud. Most of us are just regular Joes and Janes who believe in our right to protect our families. Number 5. Senator Dianne Feinstein The other very important part of this bill is to ban large-capacity ammunition feeding devices, those that hold over 10 rounds. We have federal regulations and state laws that prohibit hunting ducks with more than 3 rounds, and yet... It's legal to hunt humans with 15-round, 30-round, or even 150-round magazines. The time has come, America, to step up and ban these weapons. The other very important part of this bill is to ban large-capacity ammunition feeding devices, those that hold over 10 rounds. We have federal regulations and state laws that prohibit hunting ducks with more than three rounds, 
and yet it's legal to hunt humans with 15 round, 30 round, even 150 round magazines. California Democrat Senator Dianne Feinstein said this while discussing the proposed assault weapons ban of 2013 in March of that year. It was when the Senate Judiciary Committee passed a bill on gun trafficking, which would toughen penalties for those who buy guns for people who cannot legally own them. After passing that bill, it was when the committee began debating on an assault weapons ban proposed by Senator Feinstein. Can you imagine an American senator, (laughs) of all people, would say it's legal to hunt humans with high-capacity magazines? And again, What's with his fascination with duck rights? I gotta tell you, last time I checked my rulebook, hunting humans wasn't on the agenda for this weekend's hunting trip. (laughs) Or ever, for that matter. She's out there comparing duck hunting regulations to self-defense scenarios. I mean, come on. We're not talking about bag limits and wearing blaze orange here. The Second Amendment wasn't penned with duck hunting in mind. It's about ensuring we can protect ourselves and uphold our freedoms, not just fill the freezer with game meat. And let's get real. The focus on magazine capacity misses the mark. It's not about the number of rounds a magazine holds. It's about the hands holding the gun. Responsible gun owners know it's not a contest to see who can carry the most rounds. It's about having the means to defend yourself effectively if the need arises. So while the senator might think she's onto something with her comparisons, I reckon she's shooting wide of the target. Let's keep our sights on the real issues and not get lost in the marshes, chasing after red herrings instead of addressing the root of the problem. Number 6. Representative Louise Slaughter The Second Amendment only protects the people who want all the guns they can have. The rest of us, we've got no Second Amendment. What are we supposed to do? In an interview dated March 12, 2013 with John Fugelsang on Current TV's Viewpoint, New York Democrat Representative Louise Slaughter made this statement on the Second Amendment's impact on violent crimes. She opined that the pervasive sense of insecurity across America can be attributed to the Second Amendment, emphasizing the urgent need for gun control measures. According to Slaughter, such actions are necessary to safeguard civilians from the risks associated with the constitutional right to bear arms advocating for a more regulated approach to ensure public safety. Representative Slaughter was a 13-term congresswoman who had represented the Rochester area in the House of Representatives since 1987. In that same current TV diatribe, she also proposed that federal lawmakers should do the same thing with guns that we do with drugs. Like, what the hell? She also opined that a lot of people purchase AR-15s only because they want to shoot it out with a federal government. (laughs) Hard to imagine, huh? Someone in Congress who's supposed to know about laws doesn't even know what the Second Amendment's about. Good thing she passed away five years after making that stupid statement. Contrary to what most 2A idiots believe, the Second Amendment isn't about hoarding guns like when someone's prepping for a zombie apocalypse. It's about having the right to protect yourself, whether you're single, you have a family, or you just really love your cat. Saying only people who love guns benefit from the Second Amendment is like saying the First Amendment only protects public speakers. We all have these rights, whether we're shouting from the rooftops or whispering in the library. And while not everyone wants to own a gun, kind of like how not everyone wants to run a marathon, if a bear decides to crash your barbecue, you might wish you had something more than a steak knife. Similarly, if you're walking in a mall and encountered an active shooter, you'd wish you were carrying a concealed high-capacity micro-compact. So, yeah. This whole idea that if you don't own a gun, you don't get a piece of the Second Amendment pie? Come on. Rights are not like Netflix subscriptions. You don't lose them just because you're not watching. Everyone gets a slice, even if they never plan to eat it. 